What is going on, everybody? How are you doing tonight? I think we are all set up and ready to go. Hey, what's up, East? East Oahu, how you doing? I think I pronounced that right, I hope so. How's it going, everybody? Good to see you all tonight. How are ya? Welcome to the show. Just getting started here. Getting the final touches. I gotta kill those lights so it doesn't you know, shine in on the camera. Readjust this light here a little bit. There we go. Whoop. All right. How are you all tonight? How was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? I hope so. I sure did. It was a fantastic weekend. Cooked some food on Friday on stream. Hung out Saturday. Had to work Sunday. You know. So, right on some mad chef skills, so let's do it. Um, so, um, um, Cybernethy had suggested a... Um, um, Sarah S Saravolsky, a Savapi, is that I pronounce that right? I'm probably pronouncing that terribly. Um, but uh, Saroa, yeah, uh, it's a Savapi. Basically, it's a Bosnian, it's a Bosnian skinless sausage. Um, and so he had suggested that we should make that, and uh, I was like, I was intrigued, so I checked it out, looked up some recipes, looked up some ideas. Came up with a slight version of our own we're going to use. Food hype. What's up, Kelsey? How's it going, man? Heck yeah, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for dropping by. Um, Kelsey is Kelsey BDJ is a mad DJ with some mad skills. Welcome to the stream, bud. Um, Sarah Yevsky Chavapi. <laughs> I'm going to pronounce that terribly wrong all night. Um, I'm probably going to try and refrain from pronouncing uh, Shivapi. I, hopefully I'm pronouncing Shivapi right. At least that, you know, an easy word. Um, so it's basically a skinless sausage using ground lamb and ground beef um, with some garlic and onions and uh, a few other mixtures into there. A key ingredient to it is um, uh, baking soda. We're going to use some baking soda that's going to help it kind of puff up a little bit, give it a little bit of that sausage texture that we like so much. Um, and along with it, it's a, um, it's a, it's a Bosnian Greekish area sort of dish, um, in that whole general area. So along with it, um, I'm going to make a roasted red pepper emulsion sauce. Um, I do have the peppers already in the oven. They just take a while to roast. I didn't do anything special. The oven's at 425. I have four red bell peppers in there. We'll check them out here in a moment. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to make a bruschetta. Uh, I got a, I got a fantastic bruschetta recipe. I, I love bruschetta. Um, and it works really great with this. So and then we got a little feta cheese, a little bit of spinach. Um, and I got some flatbread to kind of stuff it in. And, uh, yeah, we're going to play around with this. I've never made this dish before. I'm very intrigued. I have made bruschetta before, and um, I've made versions of roasted red pepper um, emulsion sauce. So we're just going to make a different version tonight. So, yeah, that's what we got planned for the evening. So um, let's get started. To get started, we're going to first make our um, chivapi uh, mix. Too hot. Set the oven at 420. <laughs> yeah, I turned it down five degrees. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, we'll get that started because it needs to set for just a little bit. You preferably like an hour to overnight um, to let it the flavors really sit. But we're gonna let it go for about an hourish, give or take, because um, well, we already don't got all day. <laughs> but um, but while that's sitting, we got plenty of other stuff to make and do. So, let's switch our camera up here um, to prep. 
and we're gonna start by getting some onions and garlic together and a little bit of shallots so I have a white onion here I have a shallot here a shallot is in the onion family a little bit different so and if that music's too loud you can let me know I can turn it down or so um, so we're gonna cut the two ends off of our onion there save these ends here for my composters so I put them back in the bag here and then I just run my knife up there just to get this outside edge peeled off get the skin off now is this a spicy meal um it can be it's if you like it spicy it does use a little paprika um, and is some recipes I've seen call for Cajun it's really an open recipe um, so yeah if you have some spices and want to heat it up I have a little bit of red pepper flake and a little bit of Cajun because I personally like heat so we'll add a little bit to it um, so yeah music is good right on so we'll take our onion I just cut them straight in half like that and then put a couple of slices then we're just going to chop it right around. Nice little diced onions there. I'm going to do the same on this side. And then just keep the tip of your knife blade down on the forward downward stroke. See how you get about quarter way or three quarters of the way through the onion. And you can flatten it back down again. Keep your tip down. And you got diced onions. Missed a couple spots. But that's okay. It's getting cooked up. We're going to take our saute pan here throw some onions into it we're gonna throw a little bit of shallot so we're just gonna cut the tip off here game called just the tip <laughs> uh, sorry guys um, so yeah cut the two ends off there and then we're just gonna peel this one off because it's a little smaller you don't really need to and it's covered you don't really need to dig in take the whole first layer off and just get that shell off there we're only going to use about a half to a quarter of the shallot for this part. You don't need a whole lot. Shallots are very strong, so you don't need a whole lot. Again, tip of the knife blade down. You're going to keep your fingertips curled in as to not cut them. So the knife blade, as you can see there, the knife blade will just kind of bounce into them and just kind of rest on it. And you just keep the tip down and just do a nice forward slice motion there. And just follow it down. There we go. So we're only going to use about... We're going to use... Uh, a quarter of this now, we're going to use this other quarter for our emulsion sauce. We're going to just take the strips, line them vertical, you're going to keep the tip of your knife blade down, forward slicing motion. Never let the tip of the knife come off the table, or off the cutting board. If it comes off, it's going to start wobbling around and get crazy on you. As long as you keep it down, you have a focal point, and your blade is not going to move crazy on you, and you have a lot more control. So we're going to add this to our onions here. And next, we got some garlic. Um, so I'm not cutting garlic. I just have a little pan here, a little can of mince. It's a little cheaper and easier. Like two two finger pinches. Cybernetti with the host. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right on, brother. Um, still likes to freeze up my screen for a moment, so I just switch it back and forth. There we go. Thanks for the host. Much appreciated. All right. Apparently, I didn't take the plastic off of there. There we go. So a little bit of garlic into our pan. Uh, I got a little bit of olive oil here. I'm gonna just throw a splash of that down. We can also that flip. Um, get a little bit of salt. About a teaspoonish, give or take. And some black pepper here somewhere. About a teaspoon's worth as well. And to start, we're just going to use a dash. We're not going to use a whole lot right now, just to get a little flavor. Two dashes of some paprika, just to help the flavor along. And that's where that's going to be at. Give it a flip. All right. Crank that on. Let me get it going. 
got some of my stuff in the back there. All right. I'm going to be rotating our peppers soon, so you'll all get to see those up nice and close. Um, while that is going, we can probably get our meats in a bowl. Um, what bowl do I want to use? I like to use this for the bruschetta. I'd like to see if the meats will fit in here. Oh, wait, where's that big bowl that I have from last time? I wonder where it got put. Oh, I wonder if it's under the table. I get lost in my kitchen. Oh, here it is. Found it. We're good. All right. This will be for the meats. So, what we have for meats today is we have one pound of private select ground lamb. Mmm, delicious. And we also have about a pound's worth of um, ground beef Angus. Not that it matters that it's Angus. It's just a marketing ploy, really. Um, whether it's Angus or regular beef, you go to Burger King, they're like, oh, look, we got Angus. And you're like, and you pay an extra $2 for it. Really doesn't matter. It's all, it's all the same beef for the most part. All right. So there's our ground beef. Wrong knife for this. Need one with one with a point. Yep. <laughs> um, so you can use you can do this with multiple different meats. You can do beef and pork, pork and lamb, lamb and beef. Um, it's not recommended to use like three different meats because they'll just kind of like cancel each other out flavor wise. Um, for instance, using beef and lamb, you're going to get a real nice flavor of this lamb to mesh with the beef. If you add some pork, you're not going to really taste much of the pork. It's going to kind of add some flavor over the lamb, and I don't know. It's just best to stick with two. <laughs> yeah, if you don't have food in the cat bowl, man, those cats do not, do not um, like that. I have Miss Kittens over here. She gets really upset if you don't get her food in her bowl. All right. So we got the lamb. We got the beef. I'm going to throw some salt. Another teaspoon. I'm going to write this down as we're doing this. So, what do we have so far? One onion. A quarter shallot. Um, two teaspoons of garlic and one pound of lamb one pound of beef all right so a teaspoon of salt let's see salt pepper paprika I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of each See what we got for paprika. We got the Papa imported Hungarian paprika. It's good stuff. One, let's go two, two teaspoons worth. I'm gonna throw um, a couple teaspoons worth of black pepper in there. I love black pepper. And we're gonna throw a little bit of the baking powder, uh, baking soda in there. Whoa, that's more than a little bit. Hang on. <laughs> Too much overkill. Let's try this again. I'm gonna throw about. That's still probably a bit much. There we go. The from what I read, the baking soda is what's gonna give it. Um, yeah, keeping it authentic, man. Hungarian paprika. You know how we do. Um, and uh, so what I read about the baking soda being the secret ingredient, it adds that little bit of aerate into it, and it helps give it that little bit of extra fluffiness that we're looking for. So, um, now we're going to see how that turns out. And, um, we got garlic onions and those going. We can put a dash of garlic powder in here. Why not? All right. I'm going to throw some gloves on here. We're going to mix this up while we wait for our peppers, onions, 
or onions and uh, garlic to saute over there. Oh, we are missing a couple of things actually. Uh, we need to add some egg and put a little bit of oil in here. So usually when I make meatballs or like hamburgers, I usually add like one egg per one pound of beef. Um, so I'm gonna follow that rule. I don't really have a dedicated way of this, but I got a pound of lamb and a pound of ground beef, so I'm going to call that obviously two pounds. Um, so I'll throw two eggs in there, I think, maybe, we'll see, probably. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. No, we're just, we're, we're creating recipes here, we're, uh, we're trying new things out, so we're going to see. Um, mm. Why does that camera go out of focus on me? Let's see if we can refocus it. This way for better focus. Did we get it? There we go, it looks a little better. Ooh, it's getting windy outside. Let me close that. Alright. Get a couple flips in there. How high can we go? How high can we go? <laughs> cool. Fun. Alright. Uh, we'll move our ground beef. Well, we gotta put some eggs in there. Let's see. Do the top. Yeah. Uh, hmm. We want to go with two eggs. Let's see. What do you think? Should we go with two eggs? One egg? Two egg? Might want to go with two. Uh, let's let's work one in. We'll see how one is. We can always work a second one in if we want it. So we'll just set one here on the sidelines, just in case. All right. Need some of that raw egg off my finger there. seasonings. Ooh, that's a chili powder. I don't want to lose that. Alright, I'm going to try and take some pictures as we go along so I can post better pictures along with steps and recipes on the website. So... So, question I always ask viewers, and I haven't yet today, is uh, what did you guys have to eat over the weekend, and what did you guys, um, or having to eat tonight or this week? Did you have something good over the weekend to eat? I like to talk about food. I like to see what you guys had to eat. Alright, I'm going to call that good. We got a nice little browning here. So, show you here under the camera. Got a nice little brown going to it. Good color, good flavor. Can we get close up to see? Woo. Insane close up, completely unnecessary close up. Woo, 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 woo. All right, break the camera because we can't handle it. All right, so we probably shouldn't do it with just straight hot into there, but that's how we're probably going to do it today because we're going to cook it immediately, so it's okay. Um, I had a homemade Cornish pasty. Hmm. Bacon sandwich, which I cooked. Heck yeah. Anything with bacon is always a good time. Heck yeah sounds delicious I almost you know I really considered wrapping these in bacon and then cooking them but that's not a hundred percent traditional and I wanted to kind of make it traditional with a small twist a little bit but I figured if I wrapped it in bacon that might take it too far from traditional I don't know um, 
what do you think? Could I, should I have wrapped it in bacon? Would it have been okay? Would you have been approving of it in bacon? Or should I have left the bacon out like I did? I don't know. I kind of wanted to make it original. Like, I wanted to make it similar to um, authentic as, you know, so I didn't wrap it in bacon. All right. Mix all this up in there. We might have put too many onions in. And you know what? The other problem I did, which I do a lot, I didn't make my onions small enough. Um, I do that a lot when I do stuff with onions, but that's okay. I end up cutting them way too big. Um, I think we'll be okay. Should cut them smaller, and that's what I never do. You know what we can do though? I have a food processor here. I wasn't gonna use just yet, but we can right now. I don't know. This might even be a worse idea, but we'll find out. Let's try it. <laughs> We're here to experiment and try new things. I probably should have grinded the onions up first. I didn't. I'm gonna put the meat in here and see if this works. This might be an absolute disaster, and you can all laugh at me in a minute. So let's see. Maybe if I did it little bits at a time, it might actually work. Man! That wind outside, there's a ridiculous storm. I feel like it's going to blow my house over. You ready to par excellence? Nice. <laughs> Alright, so that might not work as well as I wanted it to. And now I have to reclean this. That's okay. Alright, we tried. That's okay, this will still work. Damn, that wind. Now I'm just making a mess being a fool. Okay. You guys understand. It's cool. So we'll just mix it back up. I think it might help us a little bit. We'll be alright. What we're gonna do is roll them in a little log thing, so I think it'll be fine. So you cook some bacon, he rated it rated it a par excellence. Um so you pan fry the bacon then? Um because I can give you a suggestion for cooking bacon. When you do cook it, take a sheet tray, heat your oven up to 350, 400 degrees, and um Lay your bacon out evenly and flat, not touching, on a baking sheet. And um, bake it in the oven for about 15 minutes. And it'll cook super evenly. And if you want to let it go longer than 15 minutes to get extra crispy, let it go longer. If you want to let it go shorter, to have it slightly softer, let it go shorter. But if you lay your bacon out in a sheet tray and bake it in the oven, it'll cook more evenly across the bacon strip and across all the pieces. And it'll also um, be less of a mess. Um, you'll have the you'll have the less of the splattering and everything up in your face. Um, you know all that stuff. So, just an idea if you want to. But that's how I like to usually cook my bacon if I'm just cooking it for sandwiches. All right, let's look at the next thing we got here. So, peppers. How are we looking? Oh, they're ready for rotation. And I lost. Oh, there it is. I'm so lost in my kitchen sometimes. I need to switch my camera for you. Look at these babies. Mm. Give them all a little rotation. They're almost there. All right. Yeah, let me give you. A... So they've been in the oven now for about um, 45 minutes or about a half hour, and uh, we're gonna put them in for about another 20 minutes. We just rotated them over. They have a very nice look to them there. And once they're done, we're gonna put them inside of a Ziploc bag, 
and they're going to steam themselves inside there. It's going to help the shell to come off real nice like. Put a glass lid over the pan. Yep, that's a good plan. That will totally work. That's a very safe way to do it. Take the pan off when you take the lid off. Um, because, yeah, you can end up in very uh, dangerous scenarios. <laughs> um, you know, depending if you have a gas stove, you can... Uh, if you have a gas stove and you flip the bacon wrong, you can end up igniting the grease that's in the pan. So always remember, uh, baking soda, baking powder will help um, uh, put out grease fires. Never use water to put out a grease fire. If any of you don't know that, know that now. Never use water to put out a grease fire. That is the worst dangerous thing you could ever do. Um, grease and fire like water to ignite. Yeah, so don't do that. <laughs> um, so, we got our meat in the fridge getting set. We have the peppers still in the oven. So next up is we're going to make our bruschetta. So, what we have here, this is going to require some cutting, some chopping. This is going to require a little work. So, let's get to it. We got a stack of tomatoes here. I got Roma tomatoes because they're on sale and they're super cheap right now. So I got Roma tomatoes. You can use bigger ones, smaller ones, whatever you prefer, whatever kind of tomatoes you prefer. Um, this is what I prefer for this today. So I cut the tip off there and then I just cut slices, put it like that, come right down. All right. So you're gonna cut, you're gonna cut your stem end off. Set that to the side. Set your uh, tomato right up and down. Cut all of our tips off. Right? So now those are off. We're just going to take the tip of the, the knife. Start on the bottom of the back, bottom of the knife, and then come up to the top. So you're going to start at the back and just slide down on it. Right? So now that we have them all in the slices, now we're going to dice them. I just push them off to the side. Take these two round ones. Keep the tip of the knife blade down. Watch out for seeds. Keep the seeds out of the way up there. Keep the tip of your knife blade down. Knuckles curled in. And you're going to do a forward downward motion just like we did with the onions. And you're going to turn them vertically. Or horizontally. I'm sorry. Yeah, got that all mixed up. Um... I'm going to slice them again. I'm going to move these off to the side. You can try and work these little pieces off if you want. Since I go put all this in a compost, I don't. It's okay. I don't spend the extra time to work that off. If you're working in a professional restaurant, you better use it because that's expensive and money. Uh, when you times that by the hundreds and hundreds, that adds up to a lot. Um, but this is all going in a compost, so not too bad. So again, tip the knife blade down. We're going to do a forward slice. Keep the skin side up, not down. If you have it down and you go like this and you don't have a sharp enough knife and do it right, check it out. You make an accordion. It doesn't go all the way through, right? So you want to keep the skin side up so you can break through the skin first and then have the nice slices. Turn them all horizontal. Knife blade down. Forward slice. And we're just going to chop them all up. So what we're making right now is a bruschetta. This is basically a Italian Greek um, style it's, it's not a salsa but it's like a salsa basically what separates this from a salsa is uh, instead of jalapenos um, we use garlic and instead of cilantro we're gonna use basil and along with the olive oil we're gonna add um, balsamic vinegar and that'll make it a delicious bruschetta. We're going to add red pepper, uh, red onions. We got red onions to cut for it. I haven't had a fresh bruschetta in a little while. Not since I made it last time. I actually think the last time I made it was for a wedding a couple summers ago, so I haven't had a bruschetta in a while. I really enjoy bruschetta. Alright, we're going to get these out of our way. Throw them in our bowl. Alright. Alright, 
right, so I use the middles, slice and dice them up first quick. Again, the outside edges with the skin. You can, if your knife isn't fully up to par either, use the base of the knife and just do a backwards pull just to get that initial cut or forward down, however you want to do it there. Turn them horizontal again. Again, keep your knuckles curled in. Tomatoes are very slippery and move around a lot. And so keep your knuckles curled in so you don't let it go anywhere, so you don't get your fingers cut off. Again, this part takes a little while. Got all these tomatoes to cut up. But it's so worth it. I freaking love bruschetta. Alright, a couple slices there. Alright, and I think this should be enough for our uh, bruschetta. I don't need to make a whole ton of it. Boy, did that weather get nasty out there tonight. It was such a beautiful day this afternoon when I was at work. I was like, man, it'd be so nice to get off work and beautiful outside. I get off of work. Weather's like 30 mile per hour wind gust, rain, hail, snow. It's sweet, really. Um, so now I'm going to use a paper towel here. We're just going to dry off our cutting board so we can switch to some onions. Alright, so we got some tomatoes. Next up, that red onion. So I'm going to cut the bottom off here. Now, I'm going to try, as I have with my other stuff, I'm going to put just this bottom part of the uh, roots into some water and see if maybe we can regrow this onion back. It'll be an experiment. We'll see what happens. As you see, this guy here um, is a garlic clove that I started growing. There's two garlic cloves in here growing. And this guy here is, uh, you can see down here on the base, it's actually a celery stalk. I had cut the celery stalk and used it on stream a while back. And I put it into some water and it started to re-sprout. And now I'm replanting it. I'm going to try and grow another celery stalk out of it. You know, just something fun to do. Um, and then I'm going to dump a little bit of dirt on my cutting board that I'm trying to cut on. So, you know, that happens too. Organic. <laughs> um, so I'm going to cut that. Pit. Since I'm not going to use the whole red onion, because we don't have a whole, whole lot here, obviously, that we're filling, I'm just going to take about that there, cut that off. I'm going to save this and wrap it up and put it away. We're going to use this here. Nice little slice. I wonder if you guys can hear that weather out there. Man, it's coming down. Uh, yeah, let's set that over there for a moment. So, cut that there. Another slice. Then we're going to keep the tip of the knife blade down. We're going to do a forward slicing motion. I'm going to try and cut this a little thinner if I can. I'm really bad about that. I'm going to turn it horizontally from how I just had it. Keep the tip down. Forward slice. We're going to make our eyeballs tear up because I can't handle onions. <laughs> All right, there we go. Woo, they burn. They sting. Oh, it hurts. All right, we got it. Woo. We're going to be alive. I think we're going to make Oh, man, it's a hot one. Woo. Yep, need to, need to rinse. Holy crap. Onions, man. I don't know what it is about them. They just tear me up. I know I said last time I'm gonna try some new ideas, and I look up and do an idea for today. So I'm sorry. I uh, got to work on that. <laughs> um, but oh man. So when they burn up your eyeballs, take a piece of paper towel, get it with some nice cold water, wipe your eyeballs with it. Blow your nose if you need to. You know. All that fun stuff. Feels awesome. Yeah. Right on. Cool, guys. And then make sure you wash your hands afterwards. Because you got... You got tears and... Everything else all over your hands now. You're a mess. Clean yourself up.
I know. Damn. Chew gum when cutting onions works 89% of the time. <laughs> Sounds like I can hear it all right. Sounds like your car's house is getting a car wash. Yeah, man, it feels like it's about to blow the roof off the place, man. Like, all right. So, um, bruschetta. <laughs> um. What do we want to add next to this? So we got that, that. How do we lost our train of thought for a moment? We're good. We're here. All right, we're gonna put some olive oil in this. Um, I got a fresh bottle. Yeah, you know. Let's, let's see. Put about the rest of that. I probably should have measured that. It's probably gonna be about a quarter cup. All right. Give it a spin. And uh, a little bit more olive oil. Oop, let's take the top off. We just got a new bottle. We go through a lot of olive oil. Another splash. Then we're going to add some balsamic vinegar. Uh, this one we will measure. Let's start with a quarter cup. Always start low. You can always add more later. Quarter cup might have been a little bit much. We're okay. Um, so we got a bit, a decent amount of juice. In, we're okay. That'll be okay. If you if it's too much juice, like if you get too much juice in there, you can go ahead and run it through a strainer or just dump a little of the juice out. You know, it's not gonna hurt anything. Um, sometimes you just get a little over excited. And we're gonna put a put a two finger pinch of uh, some minced garlic in there. And what else did we want to put? Hey, Sammy with the host. Thanks a lot. What's going on? Welcome to the stream. How's it going, everyone? Man, y'all are too cool. Thanks a lot. Host hype. Sammy, what's up? Um, right now we're, uh, we're mixing up our bruschetta. I got some meat in the fridge that's uh that's chilling and we're gonna get cooking it here in a moment i got some red bell peppers in the oven uh because we're gonna make roasted uh roasted uh red bell pepper emulsion sauce yeah um so welcome everyone welcome to the stream so there's that now the next part we got some basil to add to this we got some fresh basil we're gonna cut up good to see you thanks for dropping by All right, so we got some fresh basil here. Uh, since we got just a little bit of bruschetta here, we're gonna take let's see one, two. Let's go with three nice-sized basil leaves, huh? I'll put these back in here. Close that up for later. Yum! Heck yeah! <laughs> right on, Draco. Thanks, man. I'm glad Game of Thrones could uh, hang on a moment. <laughs> Love you, buddy. All right. So what I'm doing here is so I'm taking the basil leaves, and you take the biggest one, or in this case, they're both about the same size, and you slowly stack them from biggest to smallest, right? And then you just lay them out, and you can just roll them up real, real tight like, like a burrito, you know? And then you just take the tip of your knife blade, let's set that over, take the tip of your knife blade and you're just going to forward slice that, down and down. And you get nice perfect little strips, and then you can even do one the other way just to help it out. And sprinkle that inside. Next up, I'm going to put a tad bit of feta in here, just for fun, I think. I think I want to put feta in. I haven't decided if that's what I want to do. So we got the feta. I think we might just put a little in. We'll save some too. But we'll take a nice little handful here. Alright. Crush that up in there. We're going to save the rest of this feta for later on tonight. For uh, the rest of the dish. I just wanted to sprinkle and see if I could get a little in there just for some fun. Because I love feta. Alright. 
And, oh, we're, we're, we haven't put any salt and pepper in here yet. So we'll put about a teaspoon of salt. Uh, about a teaspoon of black pepper. Alright. See if we can get this in mix again. Uh-oh. Is that a... Oh, okay. Nice. Alright, let's taste it. Let's see how we did. What's up, Daddy Eddie? Or da Daddy Eddie? <laughs> I always mess it up. How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. No pepper emoji. I know. We're going to get a pepper emoji as soon as we get a sub button. That's the first thing we're getting is a pepper emote. So I just take a spoonful. I'm so used to taking spoonfuls of stuff and having to blow on it that like I even blow on salsa and stuff like that. But, um, mm, that's right where we want it. Balsamic syrup. Olive oil is there, feta is there. That is tasty. So, bruschetta, the longer it sits, the better flavor it has. So, um, we're going to put it in the fridge for the time being. Because we're going to use it for our meats when it's ready. Now, I think we can go to our roasted red bell peppers. <laughs> cool man I'm glad you can make it today I am doing very well um, my roof is about to blow off of my house due to this like wicked storm outside um, cybernetti thinks my car is or my house is going through a car wash um, sure sounds like it <laughs> but I'm doing fantastic how are you good to see you thanks for dropping by red bell peppers making roasted red peppers so, we have them in the oven. Let's see what time it is so I know exactly how long they were in the oven for. Oh, they were in the, out, in the oven for an hour. Oh, something happened. I missed it. I didn't see it. Oh, it froze my thing up from that camera. That's why I didn't see it. I'm sorry. What happened? Oh, no. I have a thing back here. I can see what happened. Gourmet Burger in has followed. Thanks for the follow. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. You are awesome. Four more followers, and we got that 100 hype, guys. We're almost there. Gourmet Burger, it sounds like you like some food. Are you also a food streamer by chance? I love food streamers. Hello, Burger. Or are you just a guy who loves some burgers and came up with a really cool, sweet name? Because I dig the name. But if you're a food streamer, let me know. I'll come follow you. I love food streamers. I watch them. I follow them. I support the cause, bro. <laughs> Oh, uh, the new, yeah, no, uh, Daddy Addy's been here for a while. <laughs> uh, oh, you're a chef, though? Right on, man. You go to culinary school? I did not go to culinary school. I worked with some great chefs. I worked in a lot of restaurants. I've been around the block. I've been to some, I've worked in butcher shops. I've catered weddings. I've done a few things. I've been a few places. I've seen some stuff. Um, but yeah, you know. All right. I'm going to set that off to the side. So as you see, we got the roasted bell, the bell peppers have roasted in the oven for about an hour at 425 degrees. Nope, worked all your life. Nice. Norway, right on. <laughs> My food truck done next week. Oh, your food truck's going to be done next week? Oh man, so if you scroll down on my page, uh, on the page here, you'll see a link to my Facebook. If somebody wants to type in exclamation point social, it'll bring up my list of the website and stuff. Um, 
If you have a picture of that food truck, man, and want to post it to my, uh, the Dude's Food's Facebook page, my Facebook page, that would be fantastic. I love food trucks. I've been trying to build one forever. Um, my buddy has one. I've helped him work on his taco truck. I've leased his taco truck before. I love food trucks. The Dude's Foods was actually the name going to use for my food truck, but it's expensive. So I started streaming instead to start. <laughs> um... Yeah, man, I, I love food trucks and all that stuff. So, super cool, man. Alright, so I gotta do a small amount of dishes because I had this thing ready and then I put raw meat in it and messed it all up. And so now I gotta take 30 seconds here to clean it. I am sorry, guys. If you were here a, moment, a little bit ago, you saw me wreck it. <laughs> I apologize. But this is a needed instrument tool here in a moment so I gotta get it clean <laughs> right on man <laughs> so cow <laughs> yeah I love food trucks those are so cool so if you're in Norway um most of my viewers are from that area Sammy you're in the you're in Netherlands, right, I believe? And Cybernetti's over in England. We're making a Bosnian dish. Friday I made an Afghanistan dish. Um, we're just all kind of, we're just full of ethnicity over here. Just loving it. Everybody from all over the place making all kinds of food. You guys are so cool. advertises a social path it'll give it away gosh <laughs> all right okay we got our happy little our happy little accident all cleaned up we don't make mistakes we have happy accidents Bob Ross said so much love. Uh, all right. Let's try this again, huh? So we got the food processor back to normal. Oh yeah, you're in New Zealand, and <laughs> and Cormier's hungry. <laughs> oh heck yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I If I don't know how to cook it, I will research it. I will look it up. I will figure it out. I will look through cookbooks and I will learn how to cook it. I and that's part of why I really love doing this stream and I love all of you because like you guys have given me so many cool suggestions to try out. Like I never would have known of this dish to try it out. Um I made a um a rack of lamb a while back and did a couple of different things and I just I, I never would have looked into making it if not for you guys saying hey you should check this out so like no it's awesome I love it um so we're gonna put our other one quarter of shallots in here so this is gonna what's called an emulsion sauce I'm not a scientist or a chemist so I'm not gonna be able to explain it the absolute best but I'll give you the basic idea um, what we're dealing with. What an emulsion sauce is, is you're emulsifying and splitting the atoms on a micro, on a microscopic level of like you're taking your oils and your proteins and whatnot and you're combining them together and you're, and you're forcing them to bond, right? You're creating a bond. Um, and it can be kind of delicate. You can end up breaking it. You can, well, breaking it means the oils will separate from the proteins and whatnot. And it'll um like when you have soup and you have like you can see the little beads of oil floating on top of your soup or on top of your sauce that's because it broke um you can use like flours and cornstarches and things like that to help pull it back together but that's the gist of it nice a medium rare steaks that's the only way to do a medium rare mm. we're gonna put about a couple teaspoons of honey in here 
Um, got some garlic, got some shallots. I'm gonna throw a nice big spoonful of, uh, got some Dijon mustard here. This is for our roasted red pepper emulsion sauce. Throw a nice spoonful in there, some Dijon. I even have a splash of rice vinegar. I'm gonna put just a splash in there. I don't need much, just a, just, yep, that's it. Just a splash. And I think that's gonna work. The, a little bit of salt. <laughs> I broke, I don't get paid till next week. <laughs> nice heck yeah better than well done heck yeah I can't wait till the weather starts clearing up more um, some of you guys have seen before I do some barbecuing and I set one of the cameras up in my window and I have the whole barbecue and everything set up outside we have a sweet little party um, so we'll be doing some more of that here pretty soon once the weather gets nicer. It's kind of hard to barbecue when it's cold and crappy out. I mean, I do, and I have plenty of fun doing it. I've barbecued many a times, but it's not as much fun and harder to do while streaming because then, like, I'm fighting the elements and talking to you guys, and it's just, like, trying to make sure everything stays right. Sometimes it lasts a little longer. i got to wait, so, like... So we're just going to spin this up. I know there's not much in there. You can do this with a blender, preferably probably doing it with a blender. Um, but I'm doing it with this. So that's how we're doing it. Just going to blend that up a tad bit. Then we're going to add our roasted red peppers to this. Cotton board. <laughs> El Gorilla Beard. Heck yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah, he's hanging around. Yeah, we barbecued then, and uh, I barbecued the week after that, I think, too. I did um, I did a pork, a pork tenderloin roll. Came out freaking amazing. All right, so I don't know exactly how long you want to leave these in until they basically are cool enough to handle, more or less. They're almost there. Yeah, what the heck. We'll call that okay. So what you're doing in there is you're letting them steam, and it's helping the outer skin come off. So check this out. See how the skin? Look at that. Look at that. Skin just peels right off of it. Okay? See that? That's why you steam them in the bag like we did. And you got a perfect roasted red pepper. You can open it up. Pull some of these seeds out if you want. Scrape them off. Pull that off. There we go. Look at that. Some beautiful roasted red pepper. No skin. Because the skin's got a toughness to it. Obviously, you can see. You know, it's got like a, you know. And the roasted red peppers just make the house smell so good. Some of them aren't going to peel off as nicely. And it could also be because it needs to sit and steam longer. It's probably exactly what it is. But you can still make it work and still get it to peel. If we have to, we can even run it underwater. Come on, get off there. Probably should just let it sit a little bit longer. But we're okay. Alright, let's pull this off. I'm just going to throw this into my um, compost bag. It's all good compost. So now I'm going to use my knife and see if I can get some of it to peel. Get some of those. Yeah, let's just open it up. What are we doing here? You're not going to get every single seed off. It just helps keep like from those big clumps of seeds, you know? 
So use your knife. Kind of pull some of that skin off still. Move that to the dun pal. Grab your other one there. Just kind of pull your skin off like that. You just kind of shave it off if you want. There we are. Nice. Yeah, so if you're not in a hurry, I'm not really in a hurry, I'm just, you know, <laughs> we want to get it done, you know, otherwise you can just stand here and stare at the screen for like, you know, another 10 minutes, but, <laughs> um, yeah, you can just let them sit longer, watch TV a while while you're waiting. <laughs> Pepper's a bleeder, we got a bleeder! Um, love me a burned tomato soup, heck yeah. When I do tomato soup, I really like using red peppers and roasted red peppers in my tomato soup. Makes them come out super good. Here we go. This one's going to be a little nicer for us. There we go. Peel off real good. Oh, this one's going to peel nice. There we go. Look at that. Just chunks off of there. Roasted red peppers just smell so good. Alright, see, that one came off real nice. Sometimes you just get those peppers and they're just like, they don't want to come off for you. Ooh. And it's warm. All them juices in there. Go and just pull, it, pull your seeds out there, flip it over, get the last of the skin. Some of them peel nice, others don't. It happens. You know. <laughs> oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> Some lactose pills. Right on. Alright. So, we got our skin off. This one here, we'll just take the last of that middle out. Seeds everywhere. That's okay. We'll survive. I right, just take a piece of paper towel. Kind of help dry some of it up while you go to cut. Just so you're not cutting in like a puddle of water, you know? Uh oh, camera froze. Oh, dang camera did something and wanted to freak out again so I'm working on getting X split because I can fix this problem better um, yep all right um, so what that means is I have to stop and start stream again um, sorry guys give me one moment and because I use OBS and once the camera goes down on OBS it's all over for OBS, so I have to reset it, which is why I'm going to learn how to use XSplit. Hey, what's up, Raleigh? <laughs> I always thought OBS was better than XSplit until stuff like this happens. Then I realize uh, XSplit works better. See, I, th I'm using OBS. Um, and I've seen some people use XSplit, and apparently with XSplit you can just unplug and replug the camera back in. So, hang on a moment, i got to stop and restart. Okay. All right, we up? All right, we're back. Cool. Says we're back. We're back. I'm gonna go with it. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I had it up and running. Must have just taken a minute for you guys to see it, and then I canceled it, and then back and forth. All right. 
Yep, so I want to learn how to use XSplit, because apparently with XSplit you can just unplug and replug the camera back in, and it just resets it without having to um, stop stream. I've seen somebody do it live. It was Nos, actually, who comes in the stream, so um, hang on. Oh, had to sneeze. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to business. Sorry about that. We're good. Um, so XSplit, from my understanding, you're allowed three scenes for free. And then after three scenes, it costs money. Um, I'm not sure how much. I think it was something like seven or eight bucks a month or 20 30 for the year I don't really know but I know that, that there is a free version and you can have up to three scenes for free so I might give that a try and just look into it anyways because you can do a lot of stuff live you can fix a lot of technical stuff live without having to restart unlike OBS but they both, I guess, have their ups and downs, so I don't know. I don't know. I just know this camera, for some reason, likes to cut out on me all the time every now and then. Four easy payments of fifty nine ninety nine, And just sign over your soul for just a couple of weeks, and you can have X split. I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Alright, so we're going to put this into our food processor here. And I think I'm done with this cutting board for the moment, so I think I can get it out of our way for right now. If it's not super expensive, and it's really, and, and if it's really nice to work, I wouldn't mind paying a couple of bucks the X split if it means it'll run super smooth and nice all the time and not give me any problems. So I'll try the free trial out or the free stuff out, see what happens. Let's see what's up. Alright, so let's spin this up. Oh yeah. There it is. So now that's our red, roasted red pepper mix going there. So what we're going to do, this next part here, I'm going to explain real quick while it's quiet because I'm going to have to run the food processor for a small amount of time. What we're going to do is I'm going to slowly add in the olive oil and the vegetable oil. Um, we're going to use about a 50-50 mixture of each. Um, let's do this. I'm going to measure a half a cup of each of these. And, that, and put them into a thing. That way we can have an idea of how much we use if we want to write this recipe down. Alright, so let's start with a half cup each, huh? And the hell I'll just pour it into here uh, for the vegetable oil. Four seventeen a month. Hmm. It's hard to justify, but if it doesn't have all the pro I don't know. Everybody just wants to take the money. All right. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna get it going. And I'm going to let it keep running, and I'm going to slowly keep pouring the oils in. Now, I want you to notice, I'll show you here, you can see how liquidy the sauce is at the moment, right? Not too bad. So what we're going to do is it's going to turn into a nice, congealed sauce. So, here we go. You get it going. Pour, you want to pour it in rather slow. You don't want to pour a whole lot in all at once. Why you? What is up? How's it going, man? I 
How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Sorry, everyone. We're making an emulsion sauce. We can't turn the blender off yet. We gotta let it keep on doing its thing. There's the vegetable oil. We're gonna add the olive oil. Oh, better pour it into here and pour it in nice. Gonna hit it with a splash of water. Let's hope we don't break this up. Help loosen it. Add some more oil. It's going to be a full cup's worth of oil, a half cup of olive, and a half cup of vegetable. And let's check our sauce out here. Look at that. Let's get a taste. Mmm. Mmm. So, it is missing. isn't missing hmm it's got the pepper let's add we need some salt how you doing why you good to see you man I love your emotes where'd you find where'd you find the Pokemon one man so we're gonna add a little bit more salt let's get it spinning add some garlic powder a couple of teaspoons worth little bit of red pepper flake. I like spicy. Here's just a tad bit more. I squirt some more honey in there. Another teaspoon's worth. And one more scoop of the Grey Poupon. Another teaspoon of that. And some garlic juice. We added the garlic, but we're going to pour the juice of it in there. About teaspoons worth. Alright. Let's see where we're at now. Mmm. That sauce is going to complement that sausage so well. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the side into a separate dish here. That's sexy. Mm. All right, we got a nice bowl here. We can scoop it into. All right, let's get these oiled ones out of the way. And that's how you make the emulsion sauce. You just run that oil through, and see how it's not all oily on top. And it kind of pours out. All right. Almost looks like a tomato soup, right? Look at that. That sauce blended beautifully. The oils did not break. Good job, guys. We did it. Making emulsion sauces can be very sketchy because it doesn't take much to break them. And I've, break, I've broken many a sauces, so... It's nice that that one came out. I don't have to look like a dummy breaking the sauce. <laughs> Wrath from the Graz! From the old Perkins! What's up, man? <laughs> How's it going? Wrath from the Gods. What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Um, you at work right now, bud, or what? <laughs> Taking a break? Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to pull this uh, poor blender out of the way here. Since we are done with this, we are just about to get the meat cooking. The part we've all been waiting for. Preston and Forrest say hi. What's up, fellers? A couple of guys I work with down there. How you guys doing tonight? Good to see ya. Thanks for dropping by. So, let's give you a small recap of what we made already. We have a bruschetta that we had made with some feta. 
We just made a roasted red pepper emulsion sauce. And we're going to pair that with our um, Cybernethy. How do you pronounce that again? Because I have no idea. <laughs> Nobody knows. All right, I'll pretend that you're, you guys are at home, right? Chilling, kicking it. Exactly. <laughs> um, the weather outside must have killed it, huh? Um, so what we have here is Cybernethy. I can never pronounce it right. Um, but, uh, um, it's, so, 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 Saravoski, uh, Chavipe, um, there it is, Sarajevsky Chavipe, Chavipe, yeah, I've been pronouncing it wrong all night, I'm sorry guys, <laughs> um, I, I don't really think there's an English way to say it, and I don't know my language is very well, <laughs> I'm a baddie, alright, so, we got the meat mixture made up. It's been sitting in the fridge for about 45 minutes to an hour. So I think we're ready that we can roll it out into uh, some logs. But real quick, I'm going to get our cast iron skillet heated up. So let's switch our cam up. And I got my cast iron skillet here. Let's get a little bit of the oil around there. Get it wiped nice. I'm going to turn that to a medium heat and let that sit. Got some funky jams going. Yeah, I did Google it and <laughs> wanted grammar Nazi. I know. I'm sorry, Cyber. I'm sorry. I can't pronounce words very well. I went to public school. What can I tell you? Uh, <laughs> if you know anything about American public school, <laughs> it's not much to brag about. Um, <laughs> you ever see Fox News? I know, right? Terrible. Um, <laughs> so, um... So, I got some gloves on here because this stuff is a little sticky, gets everywhere. So what we're going to do is, it's a, it's a traditional Bosnian dish. And basically it's a skinless sausage. So, we're going to roll them into the logs like sausage, right? If we can. I haven't rolled many sausage logs like this before, so let's see how we can do this. Lamb smells interesting. All right. So if you're just joining the stream, if you want to go ahead and hit that follow button, if you like what you see, we're almost at 100 followers. That 100 follower hype. All right. Once we get 100 followers, I tried to do a giveaway the other day, make some cookies and stuff, and uh, we'll have to do that again. I can't wait to make um, um, some more jerky. So, one thing you can notice that it's kind of sticking together well is that it's um, beer fest grammar. <laughs> so, you can see... It's holding itself together very well. And you can't, it's not like falling and tearing apart. Nice sausage you like. Alright. I probably should have gotten a tray. Yeah, let's use this tray. The one from the peppers, right? Why not? That'll be okay. Alright, I haven't rolled many logs like this, so... It's interesting. Wrath from the Gods, thanks for the follow! Right on! What's that mean? We need three more for that 100 hype. Heck yeah. Thanks for the follow, you guys are awesome. Much love. Alright. So you guys down there at the perk, what do you guys think of this chef outfit, huh? Do you think this should be standard out at work? You think, you think Timmy, get Timmy and Walter wearing one of these, right? Get those guys on the line. <laughs> I 
Alright, there we are. This is the long time, the other time consuming part rolling these things. Grill Sergeant. <laughs> right? I see Timmy and Walter walk around, be like, eh, <laughs> that'd be funny, wear one of these. Need a beard nut too, with that, right? <laughs> Get Timmy in a beard nut with one of these. That'd be funny. Blonde hair, but a ginger beard? Right on. <laughs> I have some uh, red highlights in mine. I'm primarily Italian, um, but my mom's side has a little European, German, everything else in them. And so some of that red pulls out in my beard, in my goatee here. Alright. There we go. Get these gloves off. Wash our hands up a little bit here. Excellent. How's our skillet? We getting warm over here. Give it a touch. I don't recommend doing that. I don't have feeling in my fingertips anymore from burning them so much and working in kitchens. So, <laughs> if you could figure out a way to tie dye a beer net, I imagine there'd be a market for it. So, this is my cast iron with. Uh, here, let's see. Let's switch our camera for you. Um, this is my cast iron with the grates we've used on stream before. Uh, see if you can see that there. See the the grates. So it'll add nice grill marks, just like a grill. Um, so I'm curious how that's going to work with these. If it becomes a problem, I can just pull a pan out and we can pan fry them as well. So, my damn stove is still not flat. Alright, there we go. So, let's get these bad boys on there and try this out. I might have rolled them a little thick. Ah, they should be okay. So, I'm going to try that. I'm going to put a glove on because these things are sticky. Cause you Gimli when <laughs> What's a Gimli? <laughs> For the love of beards, put down the razor. Alright. Let's put a couple of these down. Oh, there's the sizzle that we love. Love that sizzle. Tss, love it. It's one of my favorite sounds in the world. Cybernetti, was that you or somebody else that made the music with kitchen noises? Who told me on Friday that they made the music with kitchen noises and sent me that YouTube link? I went to your YouTube link to check it out, and it's freaking amazing. And I wanted to talk to you after stream about that, whoever that was. Um, I have to look back at the... I subscribe to your YouTube channel, so I have to go and find it again. But if you're out there, and that was you, let me know, because that was awesome. Oh, yeah! <laughs> That's funny. I didn't. I wasn't thinking Lord of the Rings there. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Whoa, suds. 
okay, that was you? Nice. Yeah, that was really cool. And uh, I want to take some of those beads. I don't know how to do it yet. Um, but is, is there a way I can I can download that clip? Or how do you cut the clip into, like, using just, like, a two or three second portion? So I can use that for, like, the follows and stuff? That would be really cool. But yeah, that that sound I, I really like those sounds. That was really really cool. You could actually do a lot with that. Um, there's a lot of DJ streamers on Twitch too, man. Um, you should talk to some of the DJs around and see if you can make sample packs for them, man, or make like you know different noises for them. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I have no idea what it takes or how to do it. Um, I mean, if you ever wanted to, that'd be cool. Yeah. I, I, those are some really cool sounds, man. I really liked how that sounded. And yeah, it'd be really neat to use something like that for like the followers and all that to have a really neat sound effect come on. Now we're going to give these a twist. Oh, got a big long hippie hair in there. Who got that hair in there? Speaking of beard nets, this kitchen's disgusting. This is ridiculous. Found a hair in my food. I want my money back. But you didn't pay anything. I know. But yeah, those, those are pretty cool. If, if you haven't, and you can go ahead and post that YouTube link in chat. I don't think Draco was here for that. Um, but if you wanted to go ahead and post your YouTube link back in chat again, that was really cool. What he did is he went around and used a microphone and recorded a bunch of sounds from the kitchen. Like cl tongs clicking, sizzling, stuff like that, you know. And uh, made some really awesome beats with it. Like put them together into some musical beats. Pretty sweet. Alright, so while those are cooking, I'm going to clean our area off just a little bit over there so we can make a display. Oh, sweet, there's the link. Yeah, so if you're, um, if anybody wants to click that and check it out, it's super cool. Uh, Draco, if you haven't looked at that yet, man, you should totally check that out. It is a really cool beat. Oh, they're sizzling, they're smelling good. Open some windows up. Yeah, Draco is also a kitchen kitchen guy. He works in kitchens and cooks as well. Um, that's why I say you might like to check that out. Isn't that neat? That's really cool. And you're right, Cyber. You said I would recognize some of the sounds. I recognized a lot of sounds. That was way cool. Cooking up pretty nice here. Turn the heat up just a tad on them. Not too much. Alright. Um, I got another little cutting board here we can use. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like that, Draco. Oh, for guys, let me restart. Um, so this is the part that we made everything for. These are the um, um, oh, and I can't scroll up, and I'm gonna say it wrong, and Cybernetic is gonna make fun of me again. <laughs> um, but these are the the ch chavipes. Um. They're the, they're the skinless sausages with lamb and beef, um, a traditional style Bosnian dish. A little paprika and stuff, freaking awesome. So then I have some bread here.
And I'm going to cut this in half. And there we go. Pocketed. Perfect. Just how we want it. Ah, oh, this one's not going to... Oh, you're not going to play nice. So these are flat breads. I didn't, couldn't really find pocketed bread around here in town. I live in Montana, so sometimes finding stuff, specialty stuff. It is a pretty yuppie town, so you can find a lot of yuppie stuff. I didn't go to a yuppie enough store, I guess. Sorry if I offended you with the word yuppies, but that's how it is around here. So we're just going to use plain old flatbread. That's fine. One of them's pocketed to make it look. That's cool. Yep, not pita. It's just flatbread. Oh well. I'm going to see if I can cut a pocket into it. Because sometimes I like to do things like that. Let's see. Oh! We might be able to make it work. There we go. So I failed on getting the proper bread. But we're still going to make it. Sizzling oh so good. I think what I might have to do for these other ones is roll them a tad bit thinner. Cooking so nice. Put this over top and hit him with a, just a splash of water. Careful if you're going to do this because you're adding water to grease and if you're using open flame, that could be a potential hazard. Mm. See, I have this kitchen hood vent fan thing. It doesn't even really work. It doesn't even really suck it up that well. Oh, sweet. Hey, thanks a lot, Cybernethy. So are they in, like, like little three-second clips or something? Or I, I don't know how any of that works, but... Yeah, that would be cool, man. Alright, these are probably not done yet. Nope, yeah, they're going to take a bit to get all the way through there. Yeah, I'm going to have to roll them a little bit thinner. Oh, they're looking and smelling great, though, guys. Oh, gosh. Mmm, let that steam up. Let's grab one of our serving plates here. I also got some spinach for us. Better. Just gonna make it. Oh, come on, don't rip on us. You're our nicest piece. Alright. So we're gonna make a small bed of spinach in there. Remember, presentation is key to any beautiful, delicious dish. If it doesn't look nice, what the hell's the point, right? Gotta make it look good. Alright. Well. It's gonna work. <laughs> oh, sweet! That'll work. Yeah, I yeah I don't know how any of that works. So I mean, yeah, that'll be cool. One down to the end, and the other one's original. Perfect, man. Thanks a lot. Super cool, of you. I will put you down on the shoutouts as well. I haven't gotten a page yet on my website for them yet. I gotta work on that, and I should do that. But I will put you down there with the other helpers there, and super appreciative. Our buddy YU out there, he does. Uh, he made all my overlays and graphics. Super cool of him. Super awesome, homie. 
And now uh, you making this. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. I see other streamers with really cool alerters and stuff, and I'm always like, man, how do they do that? Or how do they make a cool, cool sound effect one? Like that'd be really cool. And uh, and then somebody cool like you shows up and is like, I got your back, homie. And I'm like, oh, I love you. You're awesome. Thank you. So much love. <laughs> I like it, but as long as it tastes good, I'm like, screw it. Yep. Oh yeah. No, as long as it tastes good, that's the key. Um, but, uh, when you've been in the industry as long as I have, you learn little ways to make it look pretty, and that's just, you know, when it's your craft, that's what you do. Like, I, for instance, I'm not a carpenter, and, um, I had to build a shed, and my dad helped me, but, well, my dad really did it, but, like, I'm not a carpenter, but I got, you know, I got, I have to build stuff or work on things, and I don't measure things exactly the right length or paint it the right color, the per the right paint, you know, put it together, because it works, but if you're... If you're a carpenter, you're going to build your own shed really nice, you know? Same thing, I'm a cook, so I, I make it look really nice, you know? As opposed to just making it functional, I make it look good, too. Same sort of thing. Mmm, my whole house is getting so greasy smelling, or not greasy, but smoky out from this. It's awesome. It smells delicious. And what I am going to do put these gloves, uh oh, I'm all out of gloves, okay, I'm going to roll these a little bit thinner, at least try and stretch them out a little bit longer maybe, maybe that'll be a key, stretch them out, so they don't take as long to cook, Just working them out, stretching them out. Alright. And they look like they're about done. We're going to crack one of them all the way in half just to make sure. I mean, you can temperature gauge them, but I mean, these are just for ourselves, and we have a whole bunch of them, so we might as well just crack the biggest one in half. Make sure it looks good. Alright. See a nice big fatty right here, buster open. Looks cooked to me, right? This one here. Be good. Now, see, this is where the baking soda gives it that nice sponginess, you know? So I'm going to turn the oven off, but what I am going to do is set them on a, a baking sheet right here, or a baking pan. I'm going to put them in on this and set them in the oven, just so that they don't get cold on me. I'm going to pull them out there. I'm not baking them. I have the oven turned off. It's just warm. So that way they, I have all the windows in my house open, because this smokes out my house a lot, and it's super cold and windy and stuff, so... Alright, let me uh, dump off some of this grease. We got a grease jar right here. Let's set this to the side real quick. Do a small scraping. Just get some of the particles out of there so they don't continue to burn. I'm just going to throw them on this piece for right now. Perfect. Take a piece of paper towel, wipe them real quick. They're as good as new. Cast iron, baby. Gotta love it. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's get our next set on here. These ones are a little bit longer because we stretched them out to make them a little thinner so they cook a little bit better. There we go. Wash your hands off.
Late as hit, man. <laughs> right on. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Put that on top. Hit it with a little bit of water. Steam up a little bit in there. And cook her away we go. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to display these. It's supposed to go in the bread thing, and I kind of messed that part up. I kind of did. I mean, we're all right, but, you know. So if you are just joining us, and you haven't hit that follow button, and you enjoy cooking streams and like to talk about food and hang out with food people, go ahead and hit that follow, say hi. Uh, we're almost at that 100 follower hype, which is awesome. Uh, we're here every Monday night. Uh, sometimes Wednesday, uh, I'm working, I'm trying to do every Wednesday, I try to, I uh, got a new job, it's been kind of weird, and, um, and then, uh, Friday night, or Fridays and Saturdays, kind of flexing back and forth on, I'm off Fridays and Saturday. I've been doing Friday streams now, so, um, might do it Friday night or Saturday, I don't know, but, I know I need to be better on that schedule, and I'm sorry, I will be here Wednesday, I know I said that last week and I wasn't, and I was here Friday. I will definitely be here Friday or Saturday. If not Friday, definitely Saturday. If not Saturday, definitely Friday. Um, yeah. But every Monday, guaranteed. And then the other ones, I am here. It's just which one will we be here? Ooh, that one fell apart a little bit. Alright. Crank our heat up just a little bit. good so yeah we're just waiting for that guy to finish up and then we can display these real nice and then go to town eating them so you guys got big plans this week anything crazy going on this week I'll tell you what we should do Let's taste one of these guys down in here, huh? Let's see how they taste. While we're waiting for the rest of these guys to cook. Let's see how they are, huh? Making beef nice! Making some beef stroganoff. I made beef stroganoff on a ten dollar stream. I, I do streams for uh, under ten dollars. And uh I made that. Yeah, that's cooked through. Look at this guy. So split her open. I'm going to give it a nice taste here. Mmm. Mmm. That is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I think what I need is a little more paprika. But, ma'am. Love beef stroganoff. It's such a good dish. Um, but man, that is fantastic. That came out absolutely delicious tasting. All right, a little more paprika, but it's got a bit of that sponginess from the baking soda, and it's like, oh man, I can't wait to mix that with some bruschetta. And um, that bruschetta we made, and put a little bit of that sauce on it. All right, let's see. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and try some right now. That sounds really good. Take a little spoonful of our sauce and pull this up here. All right, all fancy like where you just take the spoonful and tap it all out. Mmm. Oh man, that's heaven. So good. Dip that in that, and it's gonna go with the spinach and the feta and the bruschetta in a moment. Oh gosh, I'm getting so excited. Sleeping in? I'd like to sleep in. Except I gotta work. Which is cool because I make money. To pay for stuff. Mmm. Uh, I 
I got a little too much water in here this time. We gotta dump a little out. Right? So good, I couldn't wait. I was just like, this looks amazing. And we're gonna plate it up and make it look good and do it all at once, you know, try the whole thing out. But right now, it's just tasting so good. Gotta pour a little more of this grease out. There we go. I just keep a jar, glass jar, on the side where I dump all my grease into. Uh, that, you don't want to dump it down the drain. It'll end up clogging your drains over time, costing you all kind of money and problems. And it's not good for the environment and all that, yada yada. So, I just put it on the side, and then I use them for like, I have fires outside, and I use them for fire starter. Works great. But yeah, that sauce, that roasted red pepper sauce, came out so good. These things are sizzling up nicely. Hey, there we go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I think we're back. Right? Um, but I think we lost. That's okay. I think we lost the music. I'm not sure why that went away. I can't. I don't know. That's okay, cause you can hear me, and we're back, and the kitchen's back, and we're okay.
Oh, that's why, okay. So I think we got it figured out, guys. Sorry about the. I think we're good. Last check on this part. Sorry. All right, we are back. We're doing it. We're here. So I have a crazy set up on how my uh, microphone is or not my microphone but how my stuff is plugged into extension cables and stuff and sometimes the one extension USB splitter um, goes weird but I think we're back rocking and rolling you guys can hear me cat you need to move can't be up there I know but get down All right. So, um, Beastly Ace One Five Five, how's it going? Thanks for dropping by the channel. <laughs> um, Addy, I love your idea with uh, has joined the kitchen or joined the kitchen crew or something like that. I definitely like that. And then we'll have the music from Cybernetti kind of jam it out for him. Be super awesome. Um. I don't know what kind of sound effect he pulled out of the sound, but I'm excited to hear it after stream. It'll be super cool. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, where I lost? Oh, I brought it. I carried it back with me. And my uh, pot holder. I don't know what I'm doing anymore, guys. I'm so lost. Here, I got a towel. I'm gonna use this. Because my pot holder game is not on point at the moment. <laughs> so, let's use this thing. Alright. Throw these guys in, they look done. in there and the last set laying in bed right on what part of the woods are you from we got people from Norway and people from New Zealand and England and uh, uh, sometimes people from Australia and Canada so uh, if you're laying in bed are you in America are you elsewhere or because we have quite a diverse group of people, and I love it, and you guys are all super cool. Just going to scrape some of the char out. Come on, you hooker. Get in there nice. Okay. Get our last set on here. Bud, bud, what are you doing? The dog. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for stopping by stream. Heck yeah. I was definitely wanting to strain, strangle my microphone. If there was a way to strangle my microphone, I would have done it. But then I realized it wasn't the microphone's fault. It was my USB cable's fault. So strangle my USB cable with USB cable. I don't know. It don't even make sense. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay. We can start plating this now. Um, close down the hatches. Yeah, just New York. Right on. Cool. I'm originally from the Pittsburgh area. I now live in Montana. I love it out here. <laughs> I 
So what did you have to eat this weekend there, uh, uh, Beastly Ace? Ask a few other people whether they had for for dinner over the weekend. Did you have anything spectacular or awesome? Anything super cool? Go ahead and let me know. All right, we're going to... So, as you see, they're basically... Oh, whoops. I don't have the camera. Let's switch that. There we go. So, as you see, they're basically... Yeah, they're skinless sausages. They look just like a sausage. There's no skin to them. They're not stuffed. And they go inside of our flatbread like so. Inside of this pita flatbread that I did wrong. And I got the wrong kind. But that's okay. Let's see, maybe we should do the other side. Since it's not ripped. I probably should have heated it up so that they would be a little easier to bend as well. Might have helped us. Beautiful, look at that. Chicken with a biscuit and some potatoes and some ramen noodles. Heck yeah. I love me ramen noodles. I eat a lot of ramen noodles. Ramen noodles are delicious. They are awesome. I've made many a great dishes with ramen noodles. There are many a great things that you can do with them. And for the price, you can't really go wrong. trying to figure out the nicest way I can display this and it's not working out so well for me here <laughs> alright so I think we're just going to go with that up there like that right and let's see put a couple of these on each side of it alright oh I know let's make a little bed of spinach right here right So we have the pita up there, and we set those kind of right there, right? And then, take our bruschetta, hmm, do we put it, let's see. Heck yeah, it looks like a hand in a glove. Level 100 vegan hand. <laughs> What's up, Tupelo87? How's it going, man? Thanks for dropping by stream. Good to see you. So, uh, what do you say there, Cyber Nevy? Does that look, um, does that look pretty close to authentic of what it, what it's supposed to look like? Is this, am I doing it right? Is it up to your standards? Do you approve, good sir? <laughs> So, the next thing I'm trying to figure out is how I want to incorporate the sauce and the bruschetta. Do I want to set the bruschetta right on top, or do I want... Oh, you know what? Let's do a little pow right there. Let's do a little pow right there. Huh. 
Oh my god, guys. Here we go. I am doing very well. Thanks for asking. As you can see, look like we're doing pretty well. <laughs> Heck yeah. Um, yeah, I did see that they do a bed of onions. Um, I kind of thought about that. And I switched from the bed of onions to a bed of spinach and these. And the onions, as you saw, I put the onions inside of it. Um, I did kind of consider that, and I saw that there were the peppers and the onions. That's kind of where the roasted red pepper emulsion sauce, this right here, came from. Um, I had saw that they served them on a form of a bed of onions and peppers like that, and then I saw some other things with some sauces, and, was, and I started thinking about it and was like, what if I just put it on a bed of spinach and made an emulsion sauce with the red peppers and just kind of... You know, just kind of fancied it up a little bit, you know. Um, so, yeah, I guess I could have done it on the bed of uh, on the bed of onions, but yeah, we, just, we wanted to add a little bit of our own style to it, you know. So we try kept it mostly traditional, right? I'm glad uh, I'm glad you approve, and I made it I made it pretty Bosnian style. I'm uh, I'm stoked for myself for that. So thank you. This food looks like, likes to my dog. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> it looks very good. Oh my god. Right on. Hey, how's it going, Kath Bond? So, we're going to crush a little bit of feta. Put right on top. And we still got a little more sizzling over there. Oh, check a thing there. And we still got a little cooking over there. We're going to put a little bit of feta on top here. I think. The next thing we can do is, um, I'm trying to debate how I want to do the sauce. If I want to drizzle it kind of over top, or I think I have a drizzle bottle too. Oh, you know what? I think I used the drizzle bottle, is the problem. Um, let me think, what else could I possibly? Hmm. Oh yes, I have it filled with that, that's why. Um, oh, I know what we can do. Um, here we go. So I don't have a way to... I don't have a way to do a drizzly thing with it at the moment. So I think what I want to do here... More feta, spread it out. Don't clump it in the middle. All right, gosh, I got you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, here, spread it, sprinkle a little. And there is feta in the bruschetta. And I'm gonna put. The reason I don't have any up there yet is here's what I'm gonna try and do. Um, this bag is pretty big for what I want to do, but we're gonna try it anyways. So I'm gonna throw. I need a bigger spoon. I'm gonna throw a big spoonful at the bottom of here and see if I can clip this into a spreading thing. Big old spoonful here, right in at the bottom of the bag. Or one more little spoonful there, right in at the. Oh no, we dripped. That's okay. We'll live. We'll survive. We are survivors. Yeah, I could use a tiny little saucer, or I could spoon drizzle it, or I can do what I'm gonna do now. If I can find a pair of scissors. Got this last little bit sizzling over here. All right, I want to say that is done. I'm gonna throw this into the pan as well. And let that just kind of hang out in the oven until we're ready for it. Perfect. All right, back to what we were doing. <laughs> so, let me see if I can find. I can never find a pair of scissors, so I know that's. Oh, oh, I think I have a pair. Oh, is that? 
nope, nope, nope. Oh, here's a pair. Got it. I found scissors. We did it. All right. So we're gonna cut the tip off. So, so we have it in the bag. We have it all pressed to the corner. We're just gonna tight cut that little tip off right there, right? There we go. And so we're gonna do this. How's that, right? Then that nice red color, orange color, whatever you want to call it. Crush your feta up, sprinkle it all around. How'd we do? Bang! Boom! Nice! Heck yeah! That's what we're talking about right there. And then what you can do with the rest of it, because you have your fanciness all done, you can uh, just squirt it back into the bag, or you can make one more plating set to be fancy because you want to. Let's see. No, I think that's going to make it. I think that'll work. So just take whatever's left in the bag of it, squirt it back into your main bowl, and you only end up losing like a teaspoon's worth. So... See, we can give you guys a close-up there. I have a mess on the table around it because my camera captures everything, which is a great thing. I'm not complaining by any means. Um, but yeah, check that out. Did we win? Did we win? I can't tell. If you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. Um, yeah, because I post these to YouTube afterwards as well. That looks like yum. So did I make it, CyberNevy? Did we do okay for you? Did I meet your standards? Am I good enough? No. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, thank you for the suggestion, by the way. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Um, coming up with different ideas and different fanciness and crazy ideas and fun stuff can be quite tricky at times um so anytime you guys throw me an idea out i love to hear about it because it gives me something new to try challenging um something i've never had before made before and it gives me an idea to do on stream so gg right on if you like what you see make sure you hit that follow button we're almost at the 100 hype we're almost there guys we're gonna make it um yeah so i'm gonna get my camera here i'm gonna take a couple of pictures and uh yeah we will be back again i want to be back wednesday night i'm gonna try if not i will definitely be here friday um, I don't work Friday. Oh, wait, I might have to work Friday, so I will definitely be here Saturday. I'm definitely doing two streams a week, that's for sure. I will be here. Um, check the Facebook page and check my Twitter. I post when I'm going live and what's happening on there. Um, three to go. We only need three more followers. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Grab your dogs will count. Whatever account it takes. Hit that follow button. Let's get to 100. That homemade bruschetta. Oh, beastly with the follow. Right on. Thanks, man. Greatly appreciated. We're almost there, guys. Two more to go. If you have a friend that likes food, you should tell him what's up. Tell him to hit that follow. Maybe we can hit that 100 before we leave stream tonight. Start our next stream off with 100 followers. Be super cool. But, yeah. If not, no worries. We'll get them next time, guys. It's no big deal. No no fretting it. It's all good. <laughs> Tupelay goes to create three workouts. <laughs> Catpon7 with the follow right on. Thanks a lot. Got the follow train hype going now. One after the next. Keep it rolling. No. <laughs> you guys are great. Thanks a lot. I'm here every Monday, guaranteed. Every Monday night, same time, same great place. Right here in my kitchen. Justice wa was here, 18. Thank you, Justice. So awesome. That's the 100. Is that the 100 hype? Oh, we got 100. 
Thank you so much. You guys are all beautiful and awesome. We made it. Sonic, what's up, dude? Dark Storm with the follow right on. Thanks a lot, guys. So awesome. This is our dish we had made tonight. It came out spectacular. I got some more of it in the oven. We're going to pull out Chavape Bosnian dish with a homemade bruschetta and a homemade oven roasted homemade oven roasted pepper emulsion sauce that orange sauce you see on top we roasted the peppers ourselves we made the sauce from scratch we made the bruschetta we made the the it's basically a skinless sausage we made it we made the 100 100 hype you guys are all awesome I love each and every one of you. It's so cool. I'm so glad we did it. We're on the roll now. We're going to be world famous one day. Ah! No. Um, but yeah, for real, thanks for the follows, guys. Super awesome of you. So here's a couple more of our leftover pieces. Put up on another plate. So... I tried to do a giveaway on Friday with some cookies, and I'll have to do that again, because you guys are so super cool. Perkins Crew, Justice Washer right on. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, hey, you off work? If you guys are off work, come on over and try some of this, man. If you're off work, come check it out. What do you think? How's it look? Does it look good? right on I'm so glad you guys like it so these are the little sausage links that are made these are the extras right on you guys are excellent you guys are so cool we are the dudes foods we make the world a tastier place one dish at a time and I love you all you're so cool what's that 101 followers so awesome when I started this stream, I was just going to be happy if I just had five followers, me, a couple of friends, maybe my mom, you know, something like that. And now that we got 101 of you guys, it's so cool. It's like 101 Dalmatians. Oh. Um, right? <laughs> Sonic's been here forever, dog. You've been here for a moment. And I appreciate all of it, Sonic, out there in England. <laughs> You guys are super cool. So that that's all I got for you. The food is made. It's delicious. I'll post this video on our YouTube page. Uh, check out our Facebook and Twitter. Um, the links are down at the bottom. Um, this recipe will be on my website, thedudesfoods.com. Uh, I post all of our recipes, all the pictures for the recipes. Um, I started writing articles on it. I need to write some more. I haven't gotten to it. Um, but, yeah, I'm slowly building this website up with recipes and what's not so be sure to check it out um draco if you want to hit a exclamation social in there off at midnight oh i might be asleep by then man i gotta be working in the morning uh, <laughs> but uh thanks sonic i appreciate it man heck yeah um how does it taste so here let's so i tasted a little sample of it a moment ago let's do a big taste of it then for all of you let's put a nice big glob right on our table let's get a big spoonful yeah But we are going to continue to grow, and we are going to be here all the time making great foods for all of you. So let's try this amazingness out. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's so good, guys. The bruschetta. I, I'm Italian. I can't tell you how much I love bruschetta. It's one of my favorite things in the world. And, uh... Sonic. <laughs> Heck yeah, Sonic. <laughs> Um, man, that is, that is delicious. Again, Cybernetti, thanks for the idea. If anybody has any suggestions on any meals that they would like to see me cook, um, please post them in chat, post them to me on Twitter, on Facebook, say, hey, I like this idea. I made this dish because Cybernetti was like, yo, you should make this dish. And I was like, what is it? 
I looked it up. I was like, this is amazing. Oh. Mm. And that sauce on top, so good. So, if there's anything you'd like to see, send me a message here in chat or on whatever. And, oh my gosh. Guys, you don't know what you're missing here. It's so good. But this plate, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed with the way it looks. Sometimes you just make a dish, and it just looks pretty on a plate, you know? Not too bad. So, uh... Mmm. That is delicious. So, Draco, he lives right across the street. So if you want to come on over and have dinner here, sir, um, you're welcome to come on over for some food. The rest of you guys... If, if you live in the Bozeman area, you're welcome to come on over and, and join me for dinner. Um, but uh, most of you are overseas in the European area, which is awesome, super cool. I really want to go over there one day. So, like, it's super cool you guys are all over there. I absolutely love that. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's all I have for stream. Stay being awesome. Stay keeping the world tasty. Eating good. You're all beautiful. I love you. And nice butt. Have a great day, guys. Uh, yes, Beastly. Um, Draco, actually, he lives right across the street. Royal Punisher with the follow. Thanks for the follow. Oh, you guys are keep coming. That's so awesome. You're all super cool. Um, but yes, Draco lives right across the street. And he comes over and eats food after the show. <laughs> he helps me eat all this delicious food. Because sometimes I make quite a bit of it. And we got to get it all eaten, you know. So, uh, and we're going to host another friend streamer here. If you guys like creative streams, this guy here, he's a, um, he's a chain mail maker. Keep your, keep the stream on. You want to see if Draco actually shows? <laughs> Uh-oh, did it freeze? There we go. Come on. Come back. Come back to me. Come on. Hey, there it goes. It's back. It's working. Oh, I just heard the door, so you'll see Draco walk past, and then I'm going to stop the stream. Thanks, guys. Have a beautiful night. There's Draco. Wave! Say hi! <laughs> There's Draco. So there was Draco. He's here having food. You guys all have a wonderful evening. We'll catch you next time. And Cybernethi, um... So, oh, 3 p.m. Oh, cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Cybernetti. I'll, uh, I'll send you a message back here in a moment if need be. Um, yeah, give me just a moment. If you're still online in a little bit, i got to set a couple things. Draco is saying the food is good, so it looks good. <laughs> right on. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.